and welcome to Rotary Rockets. So I received a comment on one of our parachute making videos earlier today and it was asking how do you fold the parachute? Right, two things occurred to me right away. One, I didn't think that I could explain in a couple of sentences actually how to fold a parachute and two, it probably would have been a good idea to show how to fold the parachute in the original video. So we're going to show that today. We're also going to show how to pack the parachute and also a little bit of information about the recovery cord as well. We have two parachute making videos on our channel right now. They both show how to make the same shape and style of parachute, this eight-sided flat fabric parachute. They just use different materials and different construction techniques. I'll put links down in the description in case you want to see those videos later. So this is the style of parachute that I'm going to be showing how to fold. If you've got a shaped parachute or a domed parachute, you're going to want to look up how to fold that specific type of parachute. So I've got my parachute spread out on the floor here. Now, for whatever reason, the shroud lines really love to get tangled. When this was packed in the rocket for the last launch, there were no tangles in this, but today there's just plenty of tangles in the lines. It just tends to happen. Things get twisted and turned. So the first thing I'm going to do is take all these shroud lines off of this little quick connector that I've got and install them one at a time so that there's no tangles. Now some of the folding technique is going to be based upon how much space you have in the rocket to fit the parachute, meaning the diameter of the body tube as well as how much length you have in the area where the parachute is being held. So once we get this folding started, we'll look at fitting it into different sizes. Now first I'm just going to take all the shroud lines, lay them over to one side just to get them out of the way. And then I'm just going to fold it in half this way and pull all those shroud lines all the way out so that they're not stuck underneath the parachute. So that brings the lines together so we have two lines here, two lines here, two lines here, and two lines there. And then we'll fold it in half in the other direction. So we get four lines and four lines. And then fold it in half one more time. And that's going to join all the lines up in one central location. Now from here, it's just a matter of folding it enough time so that it fits into the rocket. So we're just going to continue folding that in half. Like that. Now clearly that's too long to fit into either one of these bays. And you can simply fold this up. If that gives you a proper length, then that's fine. If it needs to be shorter, then you can fold it twice and get something smaller needs to be shorter. Now if this needs to go into the three inch rocket, it's just a matter of folding that tighter so that it gets a little bit smaller, something like that, so that it's nice and small up here, and that'll fit better into the three inch rocket. Now that we've got this folded up to a nice size that fits into the rocket, nice and loose so that it's not tight pulling out, just want to take the shroud lines and just give them just two simple wraps around. I'm not going to wrap around the entire shroud line, just enough to hold that to keep its shape. Now one thing you don't want to do is wrap all the shroud lines around the entire parachute and then continue wrapping the recovery cord around that. We used to do that until we had a couple of parachute failures. We had two launches where the parachute was wrapped so much with the lines that it simply didn't deploy. It came out of the rocket, but it literally came down to the ground just like that. The rockets were pretty much okay, a little bit of minor repairs, but still, you really need your parachute to deploy, so don't overwrap it. Just two simple wraps around the parachute just to hold the shape is plenty. Now also bear in mind when you're determining the length of how long the folded parachute would be, you don't want this to slide in and just be right here to the top. It needs to be down several inches because you're still going to need to put in the rest of the shroud lines and then the recovery line is going to go on top of that as well and then the nose cone still needs to fit in. So the 
parachute needs to be down several inches inside the tube to allow for all those other items. Lastly, I just want to talk about the recovery cord or the recovery line. This is the line that connects inside the rocket, comes up, connects to the nose cone, and then connects to the shroud lines for the parachute. Now the length of this cord is very important. It depends on where your nose cone is located on the line. In this example, the recovery line comes up and is attached directly to the bottom of the nose cone. So the minimum length in this situation is going to be, you take the length of the shroud lines, in this example I'll use six feet, and then you take the total depth of the chamber in the rocket where the parachute is located. I'll use two feet for this example. So you add six feet plus two feet, and then you add this length again. So six plus two plus two is 10. So for this example, the minimum length of the shroud line is 10 feet. But it's always a good idea to add a foot or two to that just for safety reasons. You don't need to cut it close at 10 feet exactly. So maybe 11 or 12 feet would be a good length for this. Now this is another technique for installing the nose cone in line with the recovery cord. So the recovery cord comes up from the rocket and then continues on a little ways and then goes to the shroud lines for the parachute. In this example, you have to add the distance between the nose cone and the shroud lines to your minimum length. So instead of being 10 feet, if this was two feet, it would be a minimum length of 12 feet for the total recovery line. And that's all the way from the end all the way down to where it mounts inside the rocket. Again, you should add about a foot or two to that. So for this design with the inline nose cone, a good length for this would be about 13 to 14 feet. I hope you found this helpful. If you like what we're doing with Amateur Rocketry, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us grow. We'll see you next time. Thank you.